Today we're going to start with a question. And if you get it right, you're going to win a prize. Go. Here's the question. Who are you? Wow, that really seems like a simple question, doesn't it? But it's not. Here's why. The biggest secret in history since the invention of man is that within every human that walks the earth, there exists a false self of the mind's perceived identity and a true self, spiritually driven and spiritually intertwined existence. And the false self that over six billion people in the world right now have running around in their heads, including you, is what causes pain and suffering, is what causes negative emotion, and is what separates you from the realization of your wonderful, awesome, spiritual, true self. So in reality, within the correct answer to this question lies the keystone to inner peace. The correct answer to this question can help you remove pain and suffering from your life. The answer to this one little question pulls the solution to the meaning of life itself. And I know that that's probably a brand new message that you're just getting now, but I'm gonna prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt. You wanna get rid of pain and suffering? You wanna rid yourself of negative emotions? You wanna feel the love of life and existence every day? Then you need to know the correct answer to this question. In fact, knowing the correct answer to this question is so important that it also happens to be an underlying secret message of many of the world's religions. The world's leading spiritual luminaries tried to tell us as much, but we just weren't ready to listen at the time. For instance, in Christianity, it was Jesus who said, but of you who do not know yourselves, then you live in poverty and you are the poverty. And those who have found themselves, of them the world is not worthy. It was the Taoist philosopher Lao Tzu who said, he who knows himself is enlightened. The prophet Muhammad said, whoever knows himself knows God. And what these hugely popular religious figures were all talking about was the knowledge of your true identity, the spiritually entwined existence. Now, you don't need religion to understand the correct answer to this question, but you do need to release the answers to the question, who are you, that you think you have, and that you think are correct, so that you can eventually make room for the answer that is correct. Let me explain a little better what I mean by showing you what I mean. Go ahead and answer the question in your head. Who are you? No, really, I'm serious. As a mental exercise, think of your answer to this question. Who are you? Now, your answer, probably, and if this wasn't your answer, I will get to your answer in a moment. Your answer was probably to answer with your name. I'm Aiden, Emma, Shaniqua, Yusuf, Lucia, whatever. But that is not who you are. When you first introduce yourself to someone by sharing your name, Hi, I'm Shaniqua. Do they really know anything about you? No. Nor should they because your name has absolutely nothing to do with who you are. So back to the question, without using your name, who are you? It's at this point that a lot of people wind up retreating to a rather fuzzy answer that winds up sounding like, well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm me. But that answer is kind of just a cop out that doesn't really answer the question. So the question must then become, okay, if you say I am me, define your me. Who's your me? or who are you? So it's here when you try to think of yourself beyond your name that you start to grasp on to other things. Who am I? Well, I am a 35 year old mother of two and I'm a Christian and I work at my job at blah, blah, blah company. Well, I'm a student at whatever university. I like hip hop and I like to drink beer excessively. I am a staunch independent republicrat. I am a proud black man. But none of those things are who you are either. I mean, yes, they could be true. Your chronological age could be 35 or 19 or whatever it is. Yeah, you could be married or divorced or have kids or not. You could follow the tenets of some certain religion. You may have some kind of political affiliation or have some type of job or like some particular sports team or type of music. Your body might have some racial characteristics, which then have some cultural implications. But as much as you believe that all those things make up who you are, when you're alone in a room, or alone out in the forest, 
or even just semi alone with your dog. None of these things matter. So you're not your name, you're not your education, you're not your experiences, you're not anything that's floating around in your head. You are not your family, you are not your life's story, you're not your house or your stuff. You are not your religion. You're not your body, and we're going to prove that beyond a reasonable doubt in a couple of episodes. And I know there's a little voice in your head right now going, yes I am, yes I am, yes I am. That's why they call it the false self. Because it kind of has a life of its own, and it's definitely taking action to defend itself. Right now it's probably arguing energetically inside your head that it knows exactly who you are, and it's trying even to answer the question, probably about to say something like, well, I'm not any one of these things, but I've become a mixture of all of them as I've passed through life. That's bullshit. Saying that you're a mixture of all these things would be like stating that you're a summation of your body parts and all the decisions that you've made in your life up to this point, and that who you are today and forevermore are bound by the decisions that you made yesterday. And we know that's not true. And this is what we're talking about regarding the false self. Everything that you try to think of to answer the question, who are you, is your false self that is keeping you from realizing your true self. The whole entire secret to inner peace, true self. So the key to figuring out the truth of your spiritual existence lies in the discovery of your true self. The key to you removing pain and suffering and quelling negative emotions from causing you any more trauma in your life lies in you uncovering the correct answer of this question from a true self perspective. Franciscan priest Richard Rohr recorded an audiobook called True Self, False Self, and in it he gives, from a Christian perspective, a great lecture on the false and true selves, and how many of the world's religions have lost their way in teaching the secrets that need to be taught regarding the truth about you. To hear him explain the true self and false self crisis from a Christian perspective is, is awesome, and I highly encourage you to listen to it if you can. Now, it's an audiobook, so you can get it from audible.com, and in fact, right now through I Am Spirituality, for viewers of this podcast, you can go get Richard Rohr's audiobook for free right now by signing up for a free 14-day trial at audibletrial.com slash I Am Spirituality. Now, I think Audible's awesome. I've been a member for years. I get a ton of my spiritual books from them so that I can listen to them while I'm on the go. So if you want to check this book out for free, Go to audibletrial.com slash I am spirituality and sign up for the 14 day free trial and you'll get the free book. You don't have to get this book. You can get a Stephen King book or a C.S. Lewis book if you want, but it's free if you use our code. You could even get the audio version of Khalil Gibran's The Prophet, which is pretty popular. He said, knowledge of the self is the mother of all knowledge. Are you getting how important this topic is yet? And I know you don't have the right answers, even though you think you might have the right answers. Regardless, we're going to get you to the right answers, and you're going to know the truth. And it is the most important thing in the world you will ever, ever discover. But step one right now is to know that you don't know. The great Taoist philosopher Lao once said, To know that you do not know is best. To pretend that you know when you don't know is a disease. And what he meant there was, to know that you do not know who you are is best. To think you know who you are when you actually don't is a disease. Because what's a disease but something that's passed inadvertently from person to person? So, there are billions of people walking around the earth thinking that they know who they are, and they're passing their misunderstandings of their life and existence to their children. Just like a disease. And yes, it's killing us. The good news? We're going to fix it. Starting with you. You are going to soon understand the true meaning hidden within the messages of the world's most historic prophets. You're soon going to know the wonderful truth about your personal existence. You're soon going to understand just how amazing and unique and important that you really are. For free, don't forget, and all this is free, all you have to do is subscribe. If you're not already subscribed to this podcast or the blog, do so, because each one of these videos kind of builds on the last one, and if you miss a few, then you'll be lost, and you won't understand something I say later, and you'll be all like, I don't get it. And you'll miss the secrets that all the world's greatest spiritual leaders really wanted you to know. Okay, so I like to give out homework every week, and this week's homework is going to be connected with our topic. It's a two-parter. First, I want you to get out a piece of paper, and I want you to write down every possible answer that you can think of to the question, who are you? And then I want you to 
sit there and after you have the page filled up, I want you to stare at it and I want you to start to study what it is to look at your false self. Because everything that you can write down is going to be part of your false self. Now, if you have any argument about that, that you might have written down something really, really cool uh, that isn't part of your false self, I want you to, as part two, go to the comments section and write down in the comments section what those answers might be that you think aren't necessarily labels and that might be part of your true self and share them and we'll come back and review them in later episodes and maybe we'll uh, comment on them in the next uh, few shows. So that's your homework for this week. In the next episode, we're going to take a closer look at the body, mind, spirit model that's going to help us map out exactly where the false and true selves are within us. It's going to be exciting. See you next time. Peace.